Hi, and welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to use and implement the for loop repetition structure. So let's have a look at the for loop repetition structure flow diagram. The for loop repetition structure is based on a counter controlled loop repetition structure. If we look at the flow diagram, you will see first of all, we initialize. Now this initialization is the counter variable that we will initialize. Then there's a condition. If this condition is true, code inside the repetition structure will execute. And after that code, we will update the counter variable and we will go back to the condition. This will repeat until the condition is false. And when the condition is false, we will resume with the rest of the code. Now there's four things that we need to note from this flow diagram and four very important things that we need to have when we utilize counter controlled repetition. The first thing is we need to have a counter variable. It's imperative to have a counter variable because we need to count in that counter variable, let's say one, two, three, four, and five. And we need to store that value in some memory space. And that's going to be our counter variable. Then we need to initialize that counter variable in the beginning. This initialization is very important. And it's very important to tell the the counter controlled repetition structure from where to count. It's like saying to a person, quickly count for me from one to 10. We don't see the logic, but the logic is still there. We tell that person the boundaries from where he needs to start and where he needs to end. And in the same way, we need to tell that counter controlled repetition structure from where to start and where to end. And that starting point is our initialization point. We're going to say, let's say, for instance, we're going to tell the, the loop structure to start from zero. Then we get to the condition. The condition is going to test the end boundary up until where we need to count. So first of all, we have a counter variable. Then we have initialization of that variable then we have a condition and then lastly we need to update the counter variable each and every time to have like a counting sequence going on so after each repetition the counter will increase in size or decrease in size depending on how our condition is set and our initialization so let's have a look at how we will implement counter controlled repetition by using a for loop in code blocks by using C programming. So, first of all, let's create a integer. And we will call a integer variable i. Now i, the variable i, will be our counter variable. Why we call it i? This is just coding standard. We call our counter variables from i. Let's say, for instance, in mathematics, where you have variables that's a, b, and c, or x, y, and z. In the same way, in coding, we call our counter variable i. And the next one, if we need an extra one, is going to be i, and then j, k, and etc. Next up, we will start with our for loop. Our for loop will be just simply for and then round brackets. Now inside this round brackets is going to be a few things that we need to take note of. The first thing is the initialization, the starting point of our loop. And we're going to say i is equal to zero. Then we have a semicolon. The next part of this condition statement is our limit, our condition to see up until where we need to count. So we're going to say, for instance, i is smaller than 5, semicolon. And then the last part is our 
incrementation or decrementation of adjusting of our counter variable and in this case let's say i plus plus and i will explain everything in just a moment then we have our open and close curly brackets and then we go and print f something and what we will print out is quite easy just the counter variable so that we can see what's going on so let's quickly recap we have a variable called i that's going to be our counter variable we initialize that variable to zero for our starting point then we have a condition that says while i is smaller than five so let's quickly think first of all i is going to be zero then one then two then three then four but not five because it's not smaller than and equal to five it's smaller than five so in total we will have five repetitions if we increment with one each time then we have i plus plus now i plus plus is shorthand for i is equal to i plus one that's increment with one so i plus plus will increment the counter variable with one each loop and then inside the loop we will print out the counter variable just to see what's going on so we will save this we will press build and run and then inside your terminal or command prompt you will see the counter variable counting from zero one two three and four so we had in total five repetitions and that's it we have successfully implemented a for loop that's based on counter controlled repetition just to recap counter controlled repetition needs four things to actually work the first thing is a counter variable secondly we need to initialize that counter variable for a starting point thirdly we need to have a condition to limit the endpoint and then fourth we need to increment the counter variable and it's very very important to increment or decrement or just change the counter variable because if we don't change it our condition will always be false and then we can maybe get stuck in an endless loop and we don't want that and that's it that's the for loop and counter controlled repetition thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon